Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Al. And the first season of Dragonflight Endgame content launches in just a few days. But before you can delve into the new raid, or attempt to overcome a new set of Mythic Plus dungeons, you're gonna need to make sure that your main is ready and as geared as they can be to face the new challenges, for a chance at even greater rewards. And the open world content of the Dragon Isles is full of gearing opportunities, with many new weekly activities, bi-weekly quests, daily solo content and community events. And all of these activities have a chance of rewarding you with gear of 380 item level, which is just a few points behind entry level starter rate quality gear. I spent some time exploring the open world content of the Dragon Isles, and I've been able to put together a full list of activities that you can do right now to help you improve the gear of your mains and alts before the release of the new raid and dungeons. But right before we get into the open world gearing opportunities, most of you guys watching these videos are still not subscribed. However, the more of you are mine, the more of you do. So let's keep it going. Subscribe to the channel as well as hit the bell if you're watching these videos anyway, especially if you're looking to get regular class and content updates for all the future Dragonflight builds. And in no particular order, I want to start this video off with super rares, which is a term coined by the general community. These super rares are stronger than your average rare, often requiring groups of players to defeat. These super rares can be a fantastic source of gear, as they are able to drop items that scale all the way to 385 item level. And these rares can drop items daily, capable of dropping decent upgrades for very little effort. But there is a catch. These super rares can drop all types of items, no matter your class meaning that a rogue could potentially loot plate pants, and a hunter can loot a mace designed for a paladin, and a priest can get a crossbow, and so forth. First, we have 7 super rares found in Waking Shore. All can be found inside of the Obsidian Citadel. Most of these rares spawn on a timer, and appear periodically in the surrounding area. Except for Enkind the Voracious, which is a lava worm rare, which spawns from a rare fishing activity and Captain Lancer, which spawns every time a nearby siege event has been completed. Check your LFG window to see if there's any rare hunting groups available so you don't have to fight them alone. Next, we have 4 super rares found in the Azure Span, in the Knoll village of Brackenhide. These rares spawn consistently, with most groups farming them on a 10 minute interval. Finally, we have 1 super rare found in Thaldrazas, the Ancient Protector. This rare needs to be summoned by killing mobs in the surrounding area to collect unstable matrix core. Combining 5 cores allows you to obtain an unstable core, and you'll need 4 unstable cores to power up the 4 pillars in the zone. And only when all 4 pillars are activated will the protector finally spawn. Next we have weekly quests found in the Obsidian Citadel, which can offer sizable gear upgrades. The gear that drops from these quests will scale with your character's level, but a fairly geared character can potentially loot items of 380 and above quality. Make sure you pick up both sets of quests. Some will be found next to Rathian, while others are picked up near Sabellion. All of these quest objectives are generally easy to do, and can be done solo on most characters. World quests are surprisingly useful in the early weeks of Dragonflight, with with simple objectives that can provide gear upgrades of up to 380 and above item level. These quests will scale with your character's currently equipped items, and will usually try to provide you some form of a gear upgrade. So the better geared you are, the higher your potential for better rewards. Especially when it comes to world PvP quests, as some of them do seem to be bugged and display a lower item level as a reward but when completed, they can actually scale greatly with your character's current items. These world quests are also fast when it comes to completion, which helps you if you're looking for a casual gearing experience. Most world quests and the rewards rotate twice a week for every single character, so make sure to check your map for potential upgrades at the start of the week and at the end. Next, I suggest you to retread your steps and re-explore the leveling zones of the Dragon Isles for potentially some rares. Unlike super rares, these are simple rares that you'll likely have already slain on your journey to max level. 
if any of these regular rares are still up however, you could slay them for potential gear upgrades. Like super rares, the drops on all of these rares are gonna be randomized, but they will scale with your character's level, meaning that there is a chance you could potentially loot some incredibly powerful starting items. The next time you level your future alt, it may be a good idea to save these rares for later, once you reach maximum level, as the items that drop could potentially help you get a leg up on a fresh level 70 alt. Similar to the Obsidian Citadel quest, the Muruk centers will periodically set up camps in the Honoran Plains, which are full of bi-weekly objectives. These quests have a chance to offer gear upgrades as well as big time gains in reputation. In my experience however, the ALAC quests aren't guaranteed gear upgrades. Sometimes there may be some items that could improve your item level, but not always. So be sure to check in with every single quest giver to see if an upgrade exists. These quests rotate twice a week, first at the start of the regional reset, then a couple of days afterwards before the week is offered, which could potentially offer multiple chances of gear upgrades. Next on our list we have gear via reputations, starting with the Kobad assembly. The Kobad vendors provide assembly rings, which come with powerful effects which can either shield, heal allies or damage enemies with arcane energies. These rings can be bought with gold after you have reached a high standing with the faction. To grind out this rep, slay any powerful elite creatures and arcane monstrosities in the nearby area, looting the rep items as you slay them. Most of these monsters are quite deadly, especially when you find yourself a bit undergeared. Use the wild arcana found in the local zone to power up your character, making it easier to face overwhelming numbers with enough powers available. Next we have gear upgrades via Vrathian and Sibelian reputations, where you can gain access to a high item level cloak from the quartermaster vendors. This rep however can be quite time consuming. Slaying the attack in Jardin in the Obsidian Citadel can net you key framings and key fragments. Combining three frames and three fragments helps you create a key which can be turned into either black dragonflight leaders for reputation gains. Those same Jardin can also drop other reputation items, which can be turned into either Quartermaster to help increase your standing with the faction. But these items can also be bought and sold on the auction house as well, meaning that there's a chance you can gain some gold while participating in group farming. Next we have two chests which can be looted weekly. The first is the Trial of Flood chest, found in the south of Honoram Plains. All you have to do is stick around the chest long enough and fight off the elementals until it's ready to open. The second chest is for Trial of the Elements, which can be found in the Primalist Future near the Bronze Dragonflight Citadel in Thaldrazas. The chest is located in the cave which you can find at the top left of the map of the zone, and functions exactly the same as the Trial of Flood. Both of these chests respawn every 1 to 2 hours, so be on the lookout on your map in case one of them shows up and is available. Finally, we have 3 community events, which are available every few hours. The first one is the Grand Hunts, which consistently rotate all over the Dragon Isles. Join the Maruk Centers on a series of hunts to earn some of their spoils, which decreases in quality every consecutive time that you join in. The first ball has the highest chance of dropping valuable competitive items and upgrades, but every other spoil will depreciate in value. Next we have the Siege Event, where the Black Dragonflight retakes back their Citadel. This event is up every 2 hours, and just like the Grand Hunts, it rewards spoils of scaling quality. The first reward cache has the highest chance for rarity. Every other cache will be of lower quality, but still has a very small chance of dropping competitive gear upgrades. Finally, we have the Community Feast, which offers a potential weekly upgrade just for participation, but stick to the end of every single feast. If your feast reaches legendary quality, then a rare will spawn at the end of the preparation, which is a separate chance of dropping gear upgrades. You'll find these feasts available in the Azure span every three and a half hours. And for now, this is going to be the full list of all of the open world activities, which can help your mains and alts improve the item level in preparation for the seasonal end game content. I want to thank you all so much for watching this video and hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. 
What do you think about the sheer variety of open world content available in the Dragon Isles? Were you already aware of all of these gearing activities? Or did this video help you learn of new avenues of catching up your mains and alts going forward? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. As per usual, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it informative, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I would very much appreciate it. And as always, in the description of every single live stream and video, we have a link to our Discord community channel. Probably the best place to reach out to me directly in case you want to let me know what you thought about this video or discuss with the other members of the community what you think about the upcoming changes. Join our Discord to become part of the community. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts. And as always, I'll see all of you guys in another video.